Hello everyone, welcome to what if Issei awakened his sacred gear in childhood and become the strongest part 7. Before we start please go support Ryujin99 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Issei is a male in this story. Special. Valkyrie. Part 2. The Givet, he slowly opened his eyes, his vision was blurry, and his eyelids were still heavy, but he made an effort and kept them open. Where? His voice was difficult to come out because of how tired he was and the lack of water. He tried to move, but at the slightest movement his entire body screamed in pain. You are not recovered yet, you better stay still. The familiar voice was heard in the brunette's mind. Elsha. What happened? The brunette asked mentally. He didn't trust his voice to start the talk. You were training the juggernaut, the god Helios appeared, you fought with him, you destroyed his carriage, he wounded you, you bit him, and Tichmeru transported you quickly, you were so injured that you lost consciousness, someone found you, brought you here and healed your wounds. I briefly explained the strongest carrier. Issei sighed and held his head to alleviate some of the pain he had from the fragments of memories that he was beginning to remember when he faced Helios. You are lucky. You were about to die from blood loss and overexertion, luckily that woman found you and helped you heal. Elsha said making Issei look at him a little seeing that he was in a small room. Women. Issei made a great effort and managed to sit up. There he could see the room better, he was lying on a double bed, a small night table next to the bed and a closet, there was also a window that showed that it was daytime, he moved his eyes a little more and saw a door which he assumed was the way out. Your ability to attract powerful beings never ceases to amaze me. A new voice was heard in the chestnut's mind, this was Belzard, the most powerful male bearer of his generation. Issei didn't say anything. He just lay on the back of the bed, looked out the window, and saw that a few meters away he could see an apartment. Am I in a building? The brunette wondered. You are currently in the human world, specifically in a place located in Norway, that woman brought you to this apartment and healed your wounds, you better be polite to her. He said and threatened the strongest carrier of his generation. Issei sighed. What was missing is now in the jurisdiction of Asgard. Hmm. You already woke up. A sleepy voice was heard while an emerald gem shone on the back of the brunette's left hand. That's what I should say. Issei closed his eyes for a moment, and when he opened them again he was in a different place. Almost so. In front of Issei was Belzard, and next to him was Elsha. There would be three so far this year. He murmured brown. If you think about it. It would be about four since the Himijima almost killed you when he made the first purification attempt. The large red dragon landed right behind both of his generation's strongest wielders, it was Dryag. True. The brunette agreed with the dragon as he looked towards the tables that were a little away from them. They didn't do anything all this time. Elsha said also looking at the place where she saw the chestnut tree. And how long was I gone? The brunette asked, looking away from that place. A week, Belzard said simply. Now. A weak unconscious in an unknown woman's apartment and, to top it all off, in his guardian territory. Said the brunette with a poker face. Don't start with your distrust said Elsha hitting the brunette's shoulder who just sighed. That woman took care of you all this week, she cleaned your drool, she shaved the three sad hairs from your face and gave you some baths, she didn't clean the third one because the opportunity didn't arise, Belzard said with a half smile when he saw the face. Chestnut red. Is that? Is that true? Issei asked Elsha who smiled amusedly and nodded. That woman didn't touch more than she should. If that makes you feel better. Dryag said making Issei calm down a little. But she saw everything Belzard said making Issei more embarrassed. Stop bothering him, Elsha intervened before Belzard told more embarrassing things for the innocent brunette. I don't even know why you get like that since Himajima and her did almost the same thing. Dryag said making Belzard and Elsha send him, you screwed up looks. Issei stared at the ground as he heard her dragon companion's words. You should be more tactful, Dryag said Elsha angry with the dragon that she had the gesture of making an apology gesture, she had escaped him. Don't worry. Did something else happen when Helios attacked? The brunette said, changing the subject. No, just what I told you Elsha said, and Issei nodded. And Tichmeru? Asked the brunette, curious for not having seen the mouse that saved his life when he woke up. He got along very well with that woman and he is with her. Elsha said with a slight smile when she saw the brunette's face of bewilderment. That dwarf. Issei muttered thinking about her little friend. You better come back. Dryag said feeling that the woman had returned to the apartment. We'll talk later and you better treat her well she said, and the stronger carrier warned. Issei just nodded and focused on getting out of the boosted gear. Issei opened his eyes after leaving the boosted gear, and the first thing he saw left him speechless. There, in front of him, was a beautiful woman with long silver hair tied in a ponytail, aqua green eyes, and she was dressed in black jeans, a white blouse, and white sneakers. In Issei's eyes, that woman was perfect. And he fell in love. Issei snapped out of his thoughts upon hearing Elsha's mockery. He quickly shook his thoughts about the beauty of the woman in front of him and concentrated. 
you're finally awake, I was about to use magic to wake you up, said the woman in front of the brunette walking towards the right side of the bed. Juice stopped seeing the woman next to him and watched as Tichmara made his presence known. Your little friend is very interesting, the woman commented with a calm smile. He's a very good friend. Issei said, but it was low because his throat was dry. Wait a moment. The woman quickly left the room under the attentive gaze of the brunette. Ju. Issei focused on Tichmaru who was waving at him. Not trusting his voice, the brunette made hand signs to the mouse to let him know that he was okay, even though it hurt like hell to make those simple movements. Tichmaru nodded and, making signs, told the brunette that he has the devil's luck. Issei made an annoyed face and nodded at the rodent. I'm back the door was opened again by the woman, and Issei saw that she was carrying a glass of water. Here. The woman sat next to the chestnut tree and proceeded to give him a drink. Issei tried to resist, but his body screamed in pain again, and in the end he let the woman give him a drink. Due to Chmeru made signs and poses of a baby being pampered. Issei made a mental note to make the damn mouse that was mocking him pay. Already? The woman asked, removing the glass. Yes. Thank you for that miss. Now the brunette's voice could be heard more clearly. Dahlia and you are high to say, Tichmaru told me, said the now Dahlia, as she stroked the rodent's head. Now? And what else did the dwarf tell you? Issei asked to know how much the woman knew. That you received a beating from a Greek god and that you are the current Red Emperor Celestial Dragon, said the silver-haired woman calmly. Fine. Issei could live with what the woman in front of him knew. I will keep it a secret. Tichmaru told me that you still prefer to remain hidden, Dahlia said, and Tichmaru raised her finger in affirmation. I thank you. For everything you did, I will do it now, the brunette said sincerely. No problem, the silver-haired woman dismissed with a half-smile. Don't hesitate to tell me if you need anything, you saved my life, and the least I can do is help you with whatever you need, the brunette said again. Since you mention it. I need someone to give me honest opinion of her with my cooking skills, Dahlia made a thoughtful pose as she thought about how she could help the brunette. She knew from Tichmaru that the brunette was not going to stay calm until he returned the favor for saving his life and would take advantage of it, since Issei seemed like a good boy. Well. I'm someone who likes to eat Issei tried to shrug his shoulders, but the pain attacked him again. MMM. Your body hasn't recovered yet. You'll have to stay in bed for a while to recover, Dahlia said as she appeared a magic circle and passed it over the chestnut's chest. Are you a magician? The brunette asked when he saw the magic circle. I am a Valkyrie, Dahlia said as she continued focused on the magic circle. She wasn't very good at the medical branch of magic, but she knew the basics. Valkyrie. The warrior demigoddesses of Valhalla. Issei murmured with interest. She knew some things about the Valkyries, but it was her first time facing one. That's right. Although I'm out of commission now. Dahlia said undoing the magic circle. Well. I estimate that the day after tomorrow you will be able to get out of bed, the Valkyrie said again, and Issei sighed. I'm sorry for taking up your bed. Issei said a little embarrassed. This is your bed, in fact, this is your apartment Dahlia said, confusing the brunette. What about my apartment? Issei asked curiously. How did you hear it, this is your apartment since I rented it with your money, said the Valkyrie with an innocent smile. Issei, confused, looked at the rodent who started waving. He doesn't have a cent and I gave him your money to rent this hotel, that's what the mouse said through signs. I see. Issei said with a poker face. I hope you don't mind, but I also bought these clothes with your money, as well as the food and some cheeses for Tichmaru, the Valkyrie said calmly, and the rodent nodded in affirmation. No problem. Issei said and then sighed. The image she had of the Valkyrie crumbled a little, but it was the least she could do since she saved his life. I'll pay you when I'm back in service, said the Valkyrie, seeing the brunette's poker look. Don't worry. You saved my life and took care of me this time, the least I can do is pay you. The brunette dismissed. Ugh. How lucky because I have no money and I had nowhere to go haha <laughs> said the Valkyrie, giggling. Nowhere to go? Don't you live in Asgard? The curious brunette asked. Well. For personal reasons I won't be able to return to Asgard, Dahlia said awkwardly. I'm sorry if I brought up an uncomfortable topic. You can stay as long as you want and I will leave you the apartment once I recover, as well as a large sum of money until you get something, said Issei. She didn't want to make a woman uncomfortable because she knew the consequences. Dahlia's eyes shone with joy, and she rushed to hug the brunette. Wah thank you very much Dahlia cried with joy as she buried the brunette into her breasts. Feel pain and pleasure at the same time. Dry Ag denied seeing his companion suffer from being hugged, and at the same time smiled in a silly way when he was with his head buried in the Valkyrie's breasts. Slow Dahlia smiled victoriously as she saw the brunette's look of frustration. It had been three weeks since the brunette woke up after being saved by the Valkyrie, Dahlia. The brunette had been able to get out of bed on the third day after waking up, just as the Valkyrie had said. Issei had planned to leave as soon as he could move, but, on Elsha's obligatory advice, he stayed until he was 100% recovered. 
Alia and Issei had begun to get to know each other, although it was the Valkyrie who took the first step by telling Issei about how she worked and describing some places in Asgard. Issei, although he didn't show it much, was very curious and liked new places to see, a small pleasure he had gained when he began his training journey. And so they began, each one telling about their adventures, hobbies and some life experiences. Obviously that was only at the end of the week when Issei began to open up to the woman, there was something about that Valkyrie that made him slowly trust her. In the middle of the second week Issei finally learned why he could talk to Dahlia in a more personal way than usual. The Valkyrie was a mother that surprised Issei, but now he understood why he felt that feeling of familiarity with the woman. Something about the Valkyrie's personality and way of speaking reminded her of his own mother. Elzard had made fun of the brunette for comparing Dahlia to his mother, the stronger bearer had told him that if he was attracted to the Valkyrie, it meant that he liked something about his mother. Belzard earned a few good hits from the brunette for saying something like that, not even in his dreams could he see his mother like that, and he compared the Valkyrie to his mother, because she had that mocking and at the same time maternal touch that reminded him something of his mother. Without even realizing it, the brunette and the Valkyrie had become very close in just two simple weeks. Issei wouldn't admit it, but he liked spending time with Dahlia, although sometimes he got off his nerves with her advances, but the rest is pretty passable. And now, halfway through the third week, the chestnut tree and the valkyrie faced each other in a game of chess, and you can imagine how the chestnut tree fared. I'm not good at these things. The brunette muttered as he watched the valkyrie put away the board game. It takes you a long time to think about your next move, but that's to be expected from a hothead like you, Dahlia said putting away the board game, and then threw herself onto the couch. I prefer to adapt to the situation and do the best I can. Issei said lying on the carpet. Whatever you say. Dahlia turned face down on the couch as she left one arm dangling and moving her legs. Hey Dahlia. The brunette began, receiving a millimeter. From the Valkyrie. Will you tell me the truth about why you don't return to Asgard? The brunette asked, making Dahlia stop the movement of her legs. And will you tell me why you don't make a move with this pretty woman? The Valkyrie counterattacked. Issei snorted. In the short time they had been together she had not brought up the subject of Eve. You have a daughter and, consequently, a husband. Apart from the fact that I'm going through something very difficult and I'm not in the mood to start a relationship. The brunette said slowly, looking at the ceiling. Dahlia was silent for a few minutes, Issei thought she had ruined the moment, but was surprised to see how the Valkyrie got off the couch and lay down next to him. I'll tell you why I don't return to Asgard if you tell me about that difficult moment. The Valkyrie murmured, staring into the brunette's eyes. Issei also looked at those aqua green eyes that were shining from the position of the light. Two years ago I started my training journey. The brunette began to say. Issei proceeded to tell the Valkyrie about his most personal experiences, something very surprising, but something in him told him that he could trust the woman. Thus, for an hour, the brunette told the Valkyrie how he had met his friend Arthur, his sister, the subsequent meeting with Evelyn, his entry into the Chaos Brigade, his infatuation with Eve, the time he they spent together, good and bad times, some of their missions, the meeting with Tichmaru and the Swordswoman, the addition of more people to his group in the Brigade, their subsequent betrayal of him and the death of Evelyn. Alia listened attentively to her brunette, at no time had she interrupted him and let him open up more to her. She saw how he took his time and some parts of the story, how he let out her feelings and the tears she shed when she mentioned Evelyn. The Valkyrie had taken the brunette's hand in a way to tell him that she was there. It was incredible to her how quickly they became so close, but she didn't complain, she liked spending time with the brunette, and she also enjoyed teasing him, that way of acting mature when he was just a 16-year-old young man moved her, and she promised to make him come out. To that young man when he saw his first reactions and now understood why he was so serious at times, he had been betrayed and had lost his first love, the distrust he had had the first two days was understandable. In the end she gave me the tears. She said that I was the one who had to live and then. Issei continued his story, but the tears came out again, it hurt him a lot to remember that day, and the lump in his throat didn't stop. I let him talk as he wanted. SHHH. Calm. Dahlia hugged the brunette to calm him down. She also had slight tears from hearing Issei's girlfriend's end, and to help him, and show that he would have her help she hugged him. They didn't know how long they stayed like that, but none of them wanted to move. The Valkyrie caressed the brunette's hair while Issei just clung to her. I'm escaping. The Valkyrie broke the silence that had formed. Issei paid attention to Dahlia without breaking away from the hug. You were right. I have a husband, I correct, an ex-husband, said the Valkyrie again. He is an Einherger. A warrior spirit that I myself had taken to Valhalla in my youth. We had both fallen in love or so I thought. The Valkyrie continued with a little anger at the end. We spent a few years together until I had my daughter 17 years ago. He had changed completely, he went from being loving and thoughtful to someone bossy and violent. The Valkyrie tightened her hug on the brunette. 
I had to leave my daughter with my mother because he had gone completely crazy, he yelled at me, tried to control all my movements, and even tried to hit me. Issei clearly noticed how anger transformed into hatred. He is obsessed with me. The thoughtful and loving man I thought I knew was someone who was only looking for me because I was the daughter of someone important. I should have recognized the signs. The pressure to get married and the speed of forming a family. My stupid love blinded me the Valkyrie said again, and Issei could hear her sobs. I spent 17 years running from him, I never got to witness my daughter's growth, and I earned my mother's hatred. Dahlia said regretfully. But it was my fault. I never wanted to depend on someone, and I never asked for help. I thought I could fix it on my own and not depend on my mother's influence, but it was all mistake after mistake. My daughter doesn't know anything about I, I am a disappointment to my mother, and the man I love follows me like a wolf following its prey. The Valkyrie said again in a tone of surrender. I was never able to keep a stable job because that stupid guy made things happen so that I would be fired or never accepted. That's why I never had much money besides the minority they gave me for being a Valkyrie. Now Issei knew why Dahlia couldn't I had no money. I was recently able to outwit the Guardian Heimdall with an ancient spell that I learned from my teacher, and I was able to escape to the human world. That was when I met you, the Valkyrie finished saying although Issei knew that Dahlia had summarized everything. I'm sorry for taking advantage of you, but they were the calmest three weeks I had during these 17 years. Now you can leave me if you want, I won't blame you for anything. I can't continue keeping you after having heard your story. Said the Valkyrie, loosening the hug, but Issei didn't let her. Yes, you are stupid. Said the brunette, hugging the Valkyrie more. It was new for him to see that side of a hurt woman in Dahlia, because until now he had seen her joking and bothering him, but now he saw that she also had a difficult past. You're really stupid to think that you could solve it on your own said the brunette, caressing the head of the woman who had hugged him again. Look who says it. Issei ignored Belzard's comment and continued searching for words to help Dahlia. You are a good woman Dahlia. Somewhat annoying and daring but a good woman in the end, said the brunette listening to a giggle from the Valkyrie. It doesn't bother me that you're using me because I had already told you that you could ask me whatever you want when I woke up. Apart from the fact that I like you. The brunette said again, but he whispered the end. First time I heard you say that. Sundir Dahlia said with a half smile. On the way, the brunette was in shock for being called Sundir. What you say is right. He heard Elsha's murmur but ignored it again. How about coming with me? The chestnut proposed. Dahlia had leaned back without breaking the hug to look at the brunette with surprise. I mean. Tichkmeru likes you and I would like you to meet my parents. That's what you want. I won't force you to do anything said the brunette, looking away sadly. Dahlia was still surprised by the brunette's words, after a moment she smiled with amusement and brought her face dangerously close to the brunette. You're still young but I wouldn't mind. Dahlia whispered in the brunette's ear and then bit him, causing the brunette to jump as he was as red as his armor. Then I'm the one who ruins the moment exclaimed an embarrassed to say. Dahlia was laughing heartily as were the boosted gear tenants. The atmosphere of melancholy and sadness had disappeared to leave an atmosphere of laughter in the room. Gutichmaru calmly watched as Dahlia and Issei circled the ground still hugging each other while he ate her cheese. Now give each other a kiss. Dry Ag exclaimed so that Dahlia hurt him and to embarrass the brunette more. Dad, I wouldn't mind Dahlia said understanding the legendary dragon game. Stop bothering me Issei shouted causing more laughter. Special. New trailer and problems part. 1. The give it, why should we listen to you? Issei took a breath as he faced his predecessors. Dryag, Elsha and Bells are right behind him. I know I'm not the brightest, nor the most talented. But I have determination and desire for a better future, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of ruin, tired of hearing that all Sekar Uite are followed by misfortune, tired of the juggernaut drive, tired of empty power. Tired of domination everyone looked closely at Issei as he spoke. The brunette had always heard from Elsha, Belzard and Dryag of the fate that awaits all the wearers of the boosted gear. He himself had begun to believe that destiny when he lost the girl he had begun to love with all his being, but it was time to take the reins of his destiny, he couldn't continue running away and sinking into his depression, Suzaku had told him so, Arthur had also told him so, Alia supported him, and Evelyn would have wanted him to get rid of the curse that so tormented the boosted gear wielders. I promise to change the destiny of the Sekar Yuite. I will not do what you did, I will be different, I will not be the same as you as say steeled himself. He had the support of Dryag, Elsha, Belzard, Suzaku, Arthur, Tichmeru, his parents and Dahlia, now he could not falter. So let me show you, let me show you what the new future of the Sekar Yuite is like Elsha was moved to hear her little brother's words. She believed in him, she and Belzard had assumed it since the day Issei showed that determination in his first training sessions. She would support him with everything and wish him the best for the future, it was her duty as her predecessor and as her older sister. Belzard looked with pride at his disciple, and the closest thing he would have to a brother. She still couldn't believe how that scrawny brat turned into the young man who was about to surpass him. 
She saw him grow, cry, falter and almost give up, but he always stood up, with that alone he had earned her respect. He wasn't as emotional as Elsha, but he could claim that that brown brat was his silly little brother, and therefore, he would continue to give him his unconditional support until his time in that place was over, he hoped and wished to see how that whiny brat would become. In one man. Dryag was expectant. This was the sixth time that the current bearer of it confronted his predecessors with the intention of creating a different path and discarding the ruin that so tormented the previous bearers of him. This time it was not like the previous ones she had tried over the months, this time she did not receive the mockery of his predecessors, this time she only received silence. We'll see. The brunette heard that murmur and then was expelled from the mental space. He took a long breath as he opened his eyes. Curious. He heard the chestnut from Dryag. Ugh. I think they did it on purpose, said the brunette as he tried to ignore the headache. This is promising. Belzard commented, drawing the attention of the brunette who slowly stood up to stretch a little. And that is. Issei asked as she looked at the time. It was almost 9 pm. He should be heading back to the apartment or Dahlia would get angry with him. The darkness that surrounded the previous bearers became more transparent, and I see a little shine in his eyes, Elsha said, looking alongside Belzard and Dryag at the other bearers who were under the curse. Congratulations, partner. You took the first step, he congratulated Dryag to Issei's surprise that he still didn't fall. Don't get too excited. The curse is still present, it has only gone down a little, but it is progress. Belzard intervened before Issei started jumping. But it's progress the brown man exclaimed, very proud of himself for having touched his predecessors with his words. You better come back. You don't want to make Dahlia angry. Elsha said making Issei quickly start running towards the small town where his hotel was. He had left the town since he did not know the possible reactions he could give when interacting with his predecessors. Dahlia had offered to create a dimension for him to do his things, she trusted the abilities of her friend Valkyrie, but it was better to prevent and do it away, far from being innocent. It had already been four months since the brunette met Dahlia. The relationship between the two had improved a lot since the day they both told about their pasts, anyone who saw them interact would think that they were a couple, Tichkmeru always told them both that they were husband and wife to Issei's embarrassment and Dahlia's amusement. A month ago he had resumed his goal of convincing his predecessors to help him create another path other than the juggernaut drive. It took him a few weeks to contact them because of how difficult it was to break through the darkness that belonged to the curse, after several attempts and many headaches, he was finally able to initiate contact with them. At first he only earned silence from everyone, but that did not discourage him, he knew it was going to be difficult, and even more so knowing that he was the first to try to do something like that, only almost halfway through the month he had achieved a reaction in them, and it was only because he had started the chant, he had earned a few hits from Alsha for the stupidity he did. The hit was well deserved, his vitality was still a little unstable from the last time he used the juggernaut against Helios, but he had fulfilled the objective of have the attention of predecessors. They had talked for a moment and then been expelled from that place. But it had been a small advance. The second time she tried it was a little after the middle of the month and. It was a complete failure since she almost fell into the juggernaut because her predecessors had been angry at her words, apparently they didn't like telling them that they were some emotional fearful people who were afraid of change. The third time he tried it was useless as they wouldn't let him through the curse, and he decided to give them time for their whining to calm down, an attack of pain in his head, appearing after those thoughts meant that he had the attention. Of the dot. The fourth and fifth time were exactly the same. He only received silence. And the sixth. Well, Dahlia had recommended taking the philosophical approach, but in the end she decided to tell her true thoughts, and, apparently, it worked. Partner. Issei was brought out of his thoughts by Dryag's call, he had arrived at the entrance of the town without him realizing it. He should pay more attention and not focus so much on his thoughts. And the people. He asked no one in particular, seeing that there was no one in the streets, even though the night was clear and the weather was good. Manifest the sacred gear. I have a bad feeling, Elsha said seriously. Issei had not yet mastered the ability to sense things through magic, and the absence of any human seemed strange to him. The brunette did as requested, the boosted gear gained presence, the emerald gem shined for a few moments, while Issei watched his surroundings on alert. What I imagined. You entered a barrier. Issei narrowed his eyes, he was very bad at magic and detecting it, but even he could detect a barrier. I'm no expert, but shouldn't the sweeping have stopped me? The brunette asked, now fully alert. And you're not wrong. The barrier should have stopped you, but that would happen if the owner of said barrier did not want you to enter which means. Dahlia the compression attacked the brunette, and he quickly bolted towards the apartment. Dahlia was breathing heavily, anger and pain predominating in her mind. She had been careless. She lowered her guard because she believed it was Issei who had entered the apartment. You bastard. The Valkyrie whispered as she created a magic circle to keep the attacker away from her. She had trained with Issei, but was still no match for his attacker. 
There, in front of the Valkyrie, he stood calmly, dressed in golden armor and carrying a large two-handed sword, the being that Dahlia hated the most, the man who had tormented her for years. Dahlia. You cost me a lot of favors so I can come to this place. I hope you have a good explanation the man spoke, destroying the magic circle with his sword. I Dahlia exclaimed, launching a magical shot that was blocked by the man with ease. No, you don't want to say that to me, not your dear husband, the man said calmly, approaching the Valkyrie who was gritting her teeth in frustration at not being able to do anything against the man. Judalia was surprised to see her little friend jumping towards the man who was equally surprised by her sudden attack. Ha 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 what is this? A while. Really? The man's surprise had turned to amusement at seeing Tichmeru standing in front of Dahlia. I'm leaving for a few days and the place became a mess. Tichmeru pointed out to Dahlia that under other circumstances she would have laughed, but now was not the right time. You would let a rodent protect you? How funny. The man commented, looking at Tichmeru in a funny way that, for those who know him, would realize that he was angry. Due to Tichmeru's favorite Kadachi appeared to the man's amusement. Oh. How cute. The man couldn't finish mocking because he quickly had to block a slash with his sword that was aimed at his neck. Due the man, still in shock, quickly moved his sword to stop multiple slashes from the little Kadachi. Aha is strange. Very strange but interesting exclaimed the man now recognizing Tichmeru as a possible threat. He is a technique type opponent, he focuses on speed and uses the weight of the sword to deliver devastating blows, his runes increase his strength and basic magic does not affect him because of the armor. Dahlia reported, resuming control of his emotions. He was still no match for that bastard, but he would help Tichmeru. Jew. Tichmeru motioned to the Valkyrie without taking his eyes off the man. He was training. I put up a dimensional barrier so that there is no damage to the human world, I hope Issei realizes. The Valkyrie answered the rodent's question. It's not necessary to make such a fuss. Let's just go back home the man spoke. Don't buck with me, Dahlia exclaimed as she increased her aura. She knew she wouldn't scare him, but she would get the message across. You still deny that we should both be together. Why don't you understand? Roswes would be very happy to have her parents together the man said, making Dahlia even more angry. Don't say his name you don't have the right to say it in her fury, Dahlia fired her magic at the man who just stood there letting the attack hit him. The explosion shook the place and then calmed down and left the man intact. Damn. Dahlia muttered. She had misjudged, the armor not only protected him from basic magic like all standard armors, but it also protected him from high level magic, that meant. Did you notice? That's right my teacher gave me this nice armor that repels all magic that is not divine, she said with amusement. Teacher? Since when does this bastard have a teacher? Dahlia questioned. That was new and, from the armor, she deduced that it must have belonged to someone in a high position, because armor that resisted all magic except divine magic was very rare and cost a lot. Thanks to him I can be here and thanks to him, I will be able to take you with me, as it should always have been the man said happily. You bastard son of a. Dahlia couldn't finish insulting the man because a familiar aura had just entered the barrier, causing a smile to appear on her face. What's wrong? You finally give up and come home with me? The man asked, curious to see her smile. Keep dreaming. My dear boyfriend will give you the beating of your life, Dahlia said confidently. Tichmeru saw her curious about her boyfriend that he had missed when he went to see her. What the buck are you saying boyfriend, you are mine and no one's. The man couldn't finish screaming because he was sent flying out of the building by a kick. I don't know who the buck you are, but what matters now is. What is that for a boyfriend a wild essay made his presence felt in his balance breaker and was now standing in front of a smiling Dahlia. Play along. The Valkyrie muttered making a say more confused. Bastard the trio heard a scream as a great aura was felt. Ugh. What is that level of aura? Issei murmured, feeling that that aura had traces of divine energy. It's my stupid ex-husband. Einar Dahlia said with disgust making Issei turn serious now. Chapter 39, The Give It, he made sure to move away from the brunette's room and let his confident lady facade fall to make way for his embarrassment. Ah how is it possible that a high-class lady like me behaves like a slut to prove Mr. Tannen's theory? Ravel Phoenix was fuming from the embarrassment she felt at that moment. She had followed the advice of the former Dragon King Tannen and his mother to see if Haidu Issei was in control of her instincts, she had been very hesitant, but in the end she did it for the brunette's sake. She had to be sure that her Issei Sama of hers did not fall for the charms of any slut she came across. Issei Sama you fool you had to put up with my charms to show me that you wouldn't fall for a slut, but you didn't. The blonde started punching the wall because of how angry she was, although, internally, she was happy that the brunette had fallen for her womanly charms, but she would never admit it. What are you doing? Revel was able to stifle the cry of surprise when he heard a voice. He quickly turned around and saw Irina Shudu walking towards her. Nothing. What do you need? Revel decided to save her angry happiness that was caused by a certain brunette, and she returned to her role as a high-class lady.
I came to look for Issei-kun because she was taking a while, and Mikio-san already has everything ready, said the angel, highlighting the suffix in Mrs. Haidu's name. Issei-sama is changing after our section. She will be down in a moment, Revel said calmly as she adjusted her dress. What multiple thoughts and situations took over Irina's mind because of the blonde's words. None of your concern, said Revel, passing by the angel to go towards the living room of the house. Irina stood in the hallway, still thinking about the demon's words. Irina. The aforementioned came out of her thoughts upon hearing her name. He looked ahead and there he saw Issei walking towards her with new clothes and her hair somewhat damp. The alarms went off in the angel's mind as her anger, envy and betrayal attacked her. Irina Issei was alarmed to see how the brunette angel's wings spread and then began to flicker between black and white. I'm unfaithful the angel shouted while slight tears threatened to come out of her eyes. Hey. Confused but still alarmed, Issei didn't know why the angel who was still with her blinking wings was reacting. Am traitor tears had already begun to come out of the angel's eyes just as her wings increased the flicker between black and white. Issei was really confused by the sudden accusation. He has just come out from bathing to get rid of the excitement that Revel had caused him, and now he is attacked by the angel who was about to fall. I don't know what happened, but I didn't do anything the chestnut tree defended itself. He was sure he didn't do anything. Yet. And you dare to lie to my face I exalt the chestnut. Her wings were gradually losing the characteristic shine of purity, causing Issei's alarms to go off. Now what did you do? Dry Ag exclaimed in the chestnut's mind. The screams had woken him up and he comes across that scene. I did not do anything. Issei's brain was thinking at maximum speed, searching through his actions of the day, but he found nothing that created that reaction in the brunette angel. She had just been in Kuo for a few hours, and things were already getting strange. What's going on Mickey? Revel and Roswis appeared on the other side of the hallway. The one who screamed was Mickey who was alarmed by the screams. Don't know Issei said, still not knowing what exactly was happening to make Arena like this. What did you do exclaimed the chestnut tree's mother, quickly approaching Arena, who began to cry even with her wings blinking, her black feathers already surpassing the white ones. And what do I know Issei exclaimed, indignant that they were blaming him without him being responsible. Ravel and Roswis watched the scene carefully, plus the blonde who slowly began to understand the situation. Ah. It's my fault Revel whispered while making a gesture of realization. Said whisper was heard by Issei and Roswis who quickly looked at her. Hump. Innocent angel the blonde demon said again as she denied. Wow, what a mess. Issei looked with a poker face at Irina who was laughing nervously after coming down. She now understood everything thanks to Revel's explanation. Apparently, her pretty and dear secretary had misused the word with the wrong person and that caused a misunderstanding that almost caused Irina to fall. No one could be blamed since what she said Revel was true, but Irina misunderstood it, although Irina's reaction was so exaggerated. What a change of mood. Ross was murmured sitting next to Issei who nodded while she sighed. They were currently all in the Haidu residence hall. Mickey was sitting next to Irma on an armchair while Issei was in the middle of Roswis and Revel. Angels are so innocent, Revel commented in his high-class demon mode, clearly mocking Irina who responded by sticking her tongue out at the blonde. The strangest people gather around you. Why react that way because he thought you slept with the demon Sundir? Dryag commented with surprise in his voice. The reaction of the brunette angel to the simple thought of her partner sleeping with someone else was very exaggerated for him, after all, she was only Issei's friend and not his girlfriend to control him in that way. Issei just sighed at the words of her partner. Crazy things happened to him or around him and he couldn't help it. Ice, could you leave us alone? Issei immediately stood up. It wasn't a question what her mother said, that was an order and, like a good son, she decided not to object and quickly walked towards the basement that had been modified to be a large training ground made by Dahlia and Roswis. Mickey waited for Issei to leave the field of vision and then fixed her gaze on Irina. Irina Chan. Reacting that way was very exaggerated, Mrs. Haidu said looking at the angel who lowered her head in shame. Yes, yes. I was very exaggerated, but at that moment I don't know what happened to me. The angel murmured, embarrassed. Her mind stopped working correctly after misunderstanding Revel's words. The thoughts that had appeared in her mind were difficult to control. The jealousy and feeling of betrayal, loss and anger that she had felt at that moment were so much that almost all of her self-control was gone, and she almost became a fallen angel. Revel looked at the two brunettes impassively while he crossed his legs and arms. It was fun for her to see the crisis that the brunette angel went through. Could it be her demonic instincts? Whatever it was, fun was in her mood. It's good that you understand and I hope you try to control yourself from now on Mickey said and then took her cup of tea. She knew very well that this event could be repeated later, not only Arena, but there are other women who were very interested in her son. She found her son's situation funny and problematic, having several women interested in the same man was entertaining to watch but dangerous to live with. 
She knew how far a woman in love could go, she herself had marked her territory with her beloved husband. There were many lizards who wanted her man, and he was not very bright in his adolescence. That's why she had taken charge to claim her now husband in a very forceful way that made her intentions clear. No. My son is not a clueless fool like his father, he has my genes and already has or has had a girlfriend, he knows the intentions of the girls around him. Issei tried to hide it, but she knew some things that he hadn't told her. Dahlia's slip when he talked to her on the phone while her son was on her mission had given him a lot of information. The Valkyrie mentioned a girlfriend. Issei had or had a girlfriend, that's what she was able to find out about the older Valkyrie's mistake, she couldn't get much more because Dahlia had told her that that was something only Issei could tell her, she understood and decided to wait for her beloved son to tell her when he was ready, but the information that her son has or had a girlfriend gave her some theories about her son's behavior after his return from the three-year trip. You must control your feelings. Reacting like this due to Issei's possible actions is inconceivable. I really like you Arena chan you should not doubt that, but for now you only have the position of friend with my son, and you cannot yell at him or complain to him for his personal activities, Mickey said, staring into Arena's eyes. She opened her mouth in an attempt to protest, but she herself knew that Mickey's words were true. I know. The angel let out a big sigh to clear the angry feelings from her head. I hope you don't think I'm against your feelings for my son. I just want you to understand that your reactions were very exaggerated and could cause my son to reject you, Mickey said again, so that his words could be recorded. In the mind of the brunette and the other two who were listening. She had already had this conversation with a certain redeed, and something in her told her that in the future she would have to repeat it again. I understand. Irina nodded as she kept the older brunette's words in her mind. The fear of Issei's rejection alerted her, and she was already promising herself not to react that way again. Ravel Chan the aforementioned paid full attention to the older brunette. I would like to know some things about your relationship with my son, the blonde phoenix became nervous under the penetrating gaze of the Haidu matriarch. That's the look. Roswis could only feel sorry for the blonde demon. She herself had been the target of that gaze and interrogation from the Haidu matriarch, and she was not pretty at all. I decided Akeno Himejima looked at her and Ray's friend in confusion. A few moments ago you had been informed by Kaneko that Haidu Issei had returned to Kuo. The Himejima had been talking about the raiding game that same night, but, after being informed by the young Nekashu, the conversation had taken a turn towards the topic of Haidu Issei. And? May I know what you decided? Akeno asked, watching her friend clench her fists and show a determined look. The day we will win the raiding game against my cousin, I will demonstrate the value of the Grimmery heiress, and I will tell Issei my feelings the redeed said with fire in her eyes. So what is that? Akeno was worried about her friend. A short time ago the Redeed had had a crisis of self-esteem, and the center of it was Haidu Issei. She herself spent a lot of time encouraging her friend to know that there was nothing wrong with her, and Issei was the fool who didn't see how great she was. She was still trying to figure out her friend's crush on the Red Celestial Dragon. Yes, he had gotten her out of that arranged marriage, he had trained and saved her in the Shalba incident, he sacrificed himself and received the attack of the god Loki, but, for her, those points were not enough to fall in love at the level of her red-haired friend. Dot. Yes, the brunette was interesting, he had said those words to her that helped her a lot on the day of the battle of the god Loki, he had helped his fellow nobles in Kyoto, and a few conversations between her and him were fun, to the point of annoying him. With some suggestive comments, but it was just that. The responsibility that falls on me for being her friend. Akeno sighed as she saw how her red-haired friend smiled goofily while she shook her hips, surely fantasizing something about the brunette. The RR. That's weird. Someone must be thinking about me a chill had attacked Issei while she was stretching. You're famous. It's normal that they are talking about you, Ag commented as she prepared to assist her partner and friend in training. Yes. The great red steel man the brunette said ironically while thinking about the series where they were based on him as the protagonist. Preferable to it being something more ridiculous. Ag was scared the first moments when Issei had awakened the sacred gear. At that time he was a child who had been perverted by her grandfather, it took a lot of work for Elsha to fix the young chestnut-haired tit lover, and luckily the woman managed to bring him to a fairly healthy level. Jills attacked Dry Ag as he imagined what the bearer of it could have become if he still maintained such perversions. Well. Let's see if we can access that power essay became serious as the boosted gear appeared. Welsh Dragon Balance Breaker. The armor of the legendary Red Heavenly Emperor Dragon had appeared in all its splendor. And how will you do it? Sia says that everything depends on your desire and determination, but I don't think it will be that easy. He questioned the red dragon expectantly to what his mate would do. Long Inus Mode he exclaimed the brunette and, immediately, the armor began to glow brightly. Dry Ag and Issei were shocked by the sudden event. Was it that easy? The glow intensified as the chestnut's red aura slowly changed to a crimson one, along with the glow the aura also increased, making the place shake a little. 
Access denied. All the glow, or and armor disappeared after Sia spoke leaving Issei and Dryag confused. Issei had a blank look as the place remained silent. He should have known, he never has things easy, and he shouldn't have gotten excited. It won't be that easy, kid. Issei opened his eyes in surprise when he heard the voice of that moderator in his head. You the brown man exclaimed, remembering the last and first time he spoke with this moderator. Dryag had remained silent. This was the first time he heard another voice after the appearance of Sia. All this happens because of you, Issei. The red celestial dragon couldn't help but think of all the strange or unique things happening around its current wielder. Awaken the sacred gear by pure luck, meet people with unique talents, overcome impossible limits for such a young human, meet divine beings, fight them and kill one of them, become a unique being, and remain sane after everything. What happened to him in such a short time? Also the boosted gear was influenced by the rarity of his companion. A wizard. Moderator. Two new forms of power, in his 3000 years locked up he had found nothing of them, and now they appear as if nothing had happened in the presence of his current bearer, Issei was a rarity that continued to surprise the legendary dragon. I am truly surprised. The first bearer to stay alive after being disapproved by me. You are a strange being, hi do Issei. The brunette was serious about the moderator's words. There was no mockery or threat in his words, there was only curiosity and surprise. Beth doesn't love me. The brunette whispered, remembering the times he should have died, but he always managed to come back or survive in some way or another. I would say that if he loves you. The battle between those gods for your soul is proof of this. There is something that prevents you from dying and that caught my attention. Well. There I had a point. Hades, Hela and Izanami had fought for his soul, each with their own reasons, but with the same goal, but none of them could achieve it, since an external force prevented his soul from leaving his body, and was so strong that it lasted long enough to Azazel and Ajuka turn him into a hybrid between angel and demon, giving him a new life. Now. My soul, supposedly, is special, said the brunette remembering what the primordial goddess, Izanami, told him. And you are right a somewhat nostalgic force for me protected you, and that has me very confused and curious. Confused by how you got that strength and curious why he decided to help you. The same narrowed his eyes at nothing. That moderator knew something. And what force are we talking about? The brunette questioned. He was completely normal when he was a human. No talent, no special ancestor, no reincarnation or anything crazy like that. The only thing that made him special was the boosted gear and his terrible luck getting into weird things. MMM I could tell you. But that wouldn't be fun there you have homework for a while. The say sighed at that being's mockery. Why did he make it so difficult? Is it so difficult to go straight to the point and not screw up my existence more than it already was? And what happens with the Longinus mode? I already completed the processes and restarted the boosted gear cycle when my predecessors left. Why can't I access it? The brunette asked, curious about not being able to level up. What you did was access the original potential of the boosted gear, the path programmed by the owner for those who meet the necessary requirements. A formless power that is between balance breaker and Longinus mode. This state is known as free mode, you have more access to the aura of the red dragon, but now it is different due to the intervention of that demon. The Saiyan Dryag listened very carefully to the words of this moderator. Distinct. The brunette questioned. Had his luck intervened again and put him in a different situation? The original free mode was only a balance breaker with a small access to the original aura of the red dragon, a state for the active user's body to get used to the new load of power, so that he is not in danger when he has full access to the aura of the red dragon. Dragon. But that demon was able to decipher some codes of the boosted gear and give you more freedoms or, in his words, more dynamism. Issei's gaze was blank. He had understood the first part, but he was already lost. Are you saying that the current free mode is something not expected by boosted gear? Dryag could no longer believe the luck of his companion. He again he was onto something unique. Exact. The current free mode is something unexpected for me, something unique that comes out of my programming. The red dragon sighed in resignation. He no longer knew why he did it if he had already accepted that his current partner does strange things. The only thing I understood is that I'm a weirdo. But you still haven't explained the Longinus mode thing, the brunette spoke while he massaged his head. You are missing a goal. Issei grimaced at the moderator's simple yet complex words. Target of what? The brunette asked. His only goal was to live his crazy life and not get caught in the way. Again. You've been hearing this for a long time and it seems like you still don't understand it. Issei groaned as he heard the disappointment in the moderator. Enlighten me. The brunette muttered as he crossed his arms in clear annoyance. Ah. The sacred gear works with the emotions of the wearer, they evolve according to the emotions you feel. Boosted gear and divine dividing are the ones that are most attached to emotions because the power they wield is dragonic, a power that is governed by emotions, objective or motivations. 
you awakened balance breaker when you almost lost that human girl, you entered punishment mode when you saw the same girl die, and you activated free mode when you let your predecessors go, those situations caused your emotions to reach great heights, and those emotions caused increases in power for the sacred gear, do you understand? It all depends on you and your emotions. You need a stronger emotion to access longinus mode. 27. The sayer remained silent after hearing the moderator. The memories of those events came to his mind strongly, and now that he thought about it better, the moderator was right. He had felt fear, weakness and desire for power the day he fought alongside Eve against those minotaurs, those emotions had given him access to the full balance breaker, and he was able to save his girlfriend. He had felt hatred, anger and despair when he saw Eve die, and that led him to enter Juggernaut Drive for the first time. The day he had to say goodbye to his senpais he had felt loneliness, uncertainty, fear and acceptance which caused free mode. In all those situations he had felt many emotions and a new power, good or bad, had manifested itself. Do you understand it? You need a powerful emotion to access a new power, but for longinus mode there is a rule. The say paid attention to the moderator's next words. The rule is that said emotion should not be of anger or hatred, it must be something pure and honest, just like the pure power of dragons. The brunette looked at the ground. Pure emotion. No hate or anger, positive and honest emotions to access the power that is capable of killing a god. Ah this is going to be hard. He sighed and laid back on the floor. I had a lot to think about. It is necessary. Issei was nervous at the impending situation he was about to be involved in. Completely, Revel said, looking at his notebook carefully. You'll do well, Roswiss encouraged as he adjusted his suit. You say that because you don't have to do any of this. The brunette muttered as he peeked his head through the curtain to see the other side, and what he saw made him even more nervous. The interview starts in 10 minutes was heard throughout the place, causing all the people to start moving faster. Your parents are already in the VIP box when the Bale vs. Gremory rating game starts, they are accompanied by Irina and Tichkmer Revel informed, while well, he put away his notebook and looked at the brunette critically. Because I can't be more. Miyase looked at the script that Revel had given him when he had just arrived two hours ago. Because the one who will be interviewed will be the character and not the one who brings him to life, said Revel, adjusting the brunette suit, which was a black formal suit, white shirt, bow cap, and black shoes. I'm not an actor the brunette exclaimed, but was completely ignored by Revel. Five minutes a scream was heard making Issei more nervous. It will be entertaining. Dry Ag was having a blast at the situation with his partner. He liked the character they based it on for that series where they used the image of his partner, and that's why he accepted it without thinking much about it. Elsha and the others would be very interested to see these, it's a shame they are no longer with them to see it. For you I'm dying of shame, and the bad thing is that I can't take it back anymore. He complained the brunette while he forced himself to review the script. Come on, think about this as another step to improve the image of the boosted gear wear. Issei forgot all shame when he heard the words of his partner and friend. It's true. This is a good opportunity. Issei squeezed the booklet in his hands. That event he was being involved in and used was another stepping stone to changing the image of previous and future boosted gear wielders. He hoped that the next bearer after him would not ruin his efforts. If it turns out well. Two minutes everyone to your places Revel looked at the brunette after hearing those words and was surprised to see the determination in his eyes. Okay. Time to act Issei through the script to a surprised Revel and then walk to his position to start the event. What a sudden change. Roswiss murmured after seeing Issei's change. Revel thought the same as the Valkyrie, but then sighed and smiled as he hugged the script. Mom would be laughing at this, Roswiss commented as he gave a half smile. Hello D reviewers Rebecca Bones commenting and today I bring you a bomb, said a beautiful woman with brown hair, green eyes, she was wearing a white shirt with a black skirt that was at the height of her thighs, black shoes, and she was sitting in an individual chair looking directly at a camera. On today's show we have a special guest who is being mentioned throughout the underworld and the new alliance. It is my honor to introduce you to the famous and incredible. Red Steel Man Rebecca began to say and ended up screaming with emotion. The camera moved just as the lights focused on the chair in front of Rebecca's. In this chair was a smiling Haidu Issei in his new role as Red Steel Man. How are you, it's a pleasure to be here, said the brunette while he smiled slightly in agreement with the role. How exciting I am a big fan of the series, for me it is like a dream to have him with me and to be able to interview him exclusively, said an excited Rebecca as she looked at the calm but smiling brunette. For me it is incredible to be invited here to be interviewed by a beautiful woman like you, Issei said smiling, making the woman squeal like a schoolgirl. You heard it, D-reviewers Rebecca said looking directly into the camera. You do it very well. Dry Ag was really surprised by how his partner perfectly adapted to the role of the character he must play. It's as if the brunette's personality took a 180 turn to leave a charismatic and seductive high to say. Well. I would like to start with a question that many people have posted on social networks, the interviewer began to say as she began to type on her tablet. 
As Say just nodded with his half smile and settled on the couch while he crossed his legs calmly. It's like seeing another man. Ross was murmured, surprised to see the brunette's behavior. She was with Revel in another room watching the interview on one of the many televisions in the place. Revel was with his mouth open and his cheeks flushed, his gaze fixed on the screen. How did you take the declaration of war by the famous magical girl, Levi Tan? Was Rebecca's question making Ross Wiss and Revel look at the screen with a poker face. They were expecting a more intimate question or something like that. Or declaration? I didn't know that the cute and tender magical girl could declare war on a poor man like me who, like her, tries to keep the peace. Although I do it with style. A loud UHHH was heard throughout the building after the brunette's response. I Lucifer strong response from Red Steel Man but, according to Levi Tan's fans, the hero Red Steel Man is someone very overrated and not at all refined, I clarify that I am very against those words, I expected something more. Seriously, Ross was commented in response to the clear performance that was this interview. This interview is for the young fans. You would be surprised and scared if you see a real demonic interview. Revel said watching the interview continue. It is the change. Levi's followers got used to something repetitive and monotonous. I brought the change, the perfect combination of heroism, style and power, that's what I bring to viewers bored with so many cool poses or magical glows. The brunette answered, causing another UHHH to be heard throughout the building. And I support that answer you came to make a change and show new things to those looking for new experiences. Rebecca said as she became excited again. Happy to please, was the brunette's reply with a half smile. Now, I would like. Rebecca couldn't continue when a swirl of lights appeared in the middle of the interview room. Now Levi Tan is here. Both demons watching the screen were surprised to see the sudden appearance of the demon, with the title Leviathan. This is in the script. Right. Ross was asked without looking away from the screen. No. Answered the blonde, surprised by the appearance of Seraphol Leviathan. This wasn't in the script. Issei was nervous and surprised. Nervous to feel Seraphol's hostile aura and surprised by the turn things took in minutes. HMPH Red Steel Man. We finally meet face to face, said Seraphol pointing her staff at the brunette. Though with a flow, Issei was surprised to hear a familiar voice in his ear, but he quickly realized that it was Seraphol because she winked at him. Good. Issei sighed and smiled slightly. The famous Levi so. A surprise to see you here, Issei said in the role of him as he slowly stood up from his seat and faced Seraphol. Chapter 40, The Give It, I thought things would get out of control. Issei muttered as he took off the top of his suit. He was currently in his dressing room after the interview ended. The interview had ended about five minutes after the appearance of Seraphol Leviathan and his magical girl persona. They had made their rivalry official and agreed to do a special episode of both series to decide who was the best. The brunette sighed as he remembered that agreement he had gotten too into character and let himself go. His fault and his peculiar defect of adapting to every situation. Red Steel Man. I'll have to put up with this for a long time he muttered thinking about the character he had played no more than 10 minutes ago. It had come so naturally to him that it scared him for a moment. You are a bit arrogant and sarcastic. We could attribute it to your dragon instincts and your new demon instincts, a celestial dragon commented. Issei had to agree with her. Even Arthur had told him something similar in their time with the Chaos Brigade, although now the demonic instincts were added. Issei Sama you better get changed because in 10 minutes we have to leave for the City of Agrees to watch the Grimory vs Bale raiding game, the brunette heard from the other side of the door. I'm coming chick. He murmured brown as he took off his suit. I heard it, Ravel exclaimed to the hybrid's amusement. It was the intention. Issei proceeded to take off his bottom so he was only left in his underwear, he left the suit hanging and saw that on one side there was another suit that made him sigh. What happened to the infamous Issei? The brunette asked himself before proceeding to put on the suit. The former Issei would be laughing when he saw the current one. He was not one of those who cared about his image, he always dressed casually or in battle attire. Elsha had reproached him for that since she always dressed elegantly even for battle, he never paid attention to her, since he was never going to attend a party of that level of elegance, and he was not well known to be reproached for his way of acting. Dress. Elsha must be laughing at me. He muttered as he looked in the mirror already fully dressed. It wasn't that different from the previous suit, it just changed the colors, this time it didn't have the jacket, and in its place was a black dress vest, under the vest was a dark red shirt, black pants and matching shoes. He looked good. Although he didn't feel completely like himself. You spent almost your entire short life dressing like a bum, it's normal for you to feel strange. An amused Drake commented upon seeing the brunette's poker face while he looked in the mirror. And what do you know about clothing? You spend it naked 24-7, said Issei as he sighed and sat down, he still had two minutes before his assistant Sundier came to look for him. Half of my former carriers were women addicted to personal image, some men too, but they were all airheads who only thought about fighting or fornicating. The brunette snorted when he heard the laughter of his companion. 
They almost never talked to me, but I always heard or saw how they talked about clothes, behavior and things like that, so I know something about it. He said the dragon again, remembering old times. He wasn't going to say that he spent a lot of time listening to Elsha talk about those things. He had an image to maintain so that they wouldn't tell him that he was getting soft. Issei looked at his reflection in the mirror again, so much has changed since he returned from his trip. The me of him from three years ago would be laughing seeing him dressed like that. And so? Issei saw through the mirror that next to him there was a small green sphere floating, he turned around, and there he saw the same sphere floating right next to his head. And you, what are you? The brunette asked, trying to take the sphere that quickly flew around him to stop right in front. Issei frowned as he heard the beeps coming from the sphere. I knew I had to learn to understand the Star Wars robot. The brown man murmured as he understood that the sphere was trying to communicate with him. He said hello. Dry Ag spoke making Issei make an expression of curiosity and slight surprise. I see you can understand it. What is it? Morse. The brunette asked, trying to touch the sphere, but it quickly began to spin around him again. I honestly didn't understand him at all. But I guess he said that. Issei sighed, he had expected too much from his dragon companion. I can't understand you little friend. But I guess it's nice to meet you, Issei said to the sphere that stopped in front of him again. Issei Sama we must go now was heard from the other side of the door. Though the brunette exclaimed as he stood up still looking at the sphere. What should he do now? He had to leave, but he was curious about the sphere. He walked towards the door, he opened it, and there he saw his assistant looking at his notebook. I have a visitor Ravel looked up from her notebook and looked curiously at Issei. He looked into the room and saw a green sphere floating in front of the mirror. Ha ah, that's what Mrs. Seraphel was looking for, the blonde exclaimed, pointing to the sphere that quickly flew next to the brunette. Could you enlighten me? The brunette asked, curious about the blonde's reaction. Mrs. Seraphel was looking for it all over the set, she said it was a gift, but she didn't say anything else because she went out looking for it, the blonde explained, watching how the sphere floated around the brunette. It must be something important if it's hers. The brunette commented looking at the floating sphere. I think I saw her running around just now. Ravel said looking down the hallway trying to find Sir Offal. I see that you are ready the attention of both young people was captured by a new voice. They both looked at the fountain, and there they saw Oswis approaching them. The Valkyrie was not wearing the usual business suit or her Valkyrie suit, she was now wearing a one-piece dress that reached to her knees, it was light blue, her long hair tied in a high ponytail, made her look more beautiful than usual. You look. Beautiful Issei couldn't help but say that compliment seeing how her friend's daughter was dressed. Raswa smiled slightly at the compliment. She very rarely dressed like that. Actually, she had never dressed like that. She had gone to some high-class parties when she was Aden's escort, but she always wore her formal dress or her armor, now that she was a VIP guest she can show off her beauty. Her previous one would be dying of embarrassment, but her confidence improved a lot thanks to the talks with her mother and with the chestnut tree's mother. Thank you and you look so. Good said the Valkyrie looking at the brunette's appearance. She had to praise Ravel for selecting the brunette's outfit because she looked very good. Ravel's left eye was twitching as he clutched his notebook. The blonde saw the brunette and the Valkyrie, both had forgotten about her while they were flirting. That was unheard of. There you are the trio's attention was once again captured by a new voice. The three watched as Seraphol Leviathan, still dressed as a magical girl, came running from the other hallway towards them. The sphere floating next to Issei quickly hid behind the brunette. Roswis, who could see the sphere, was shocked when she saw the sphere. I ran all over the building the demon queen exclaimed as she reached the trio. I guess you talk to the sphere. Issei said looking next to her, but the sphere was gone. That's it. That's it. Roswis snapped out of her shock to point at the sphere that was hidden in Issei's back. The brunette looked curious at Roswis's surprised expression. Well. I was going to bring it here anyway. Seraphol muttered, looking slightly at the sphere. The sphere let out a few beeps as she hid behind the chestnut tree again. I told you I would only take you to him Seraphol said, apparently understanding the sphere. The sphere let out sounds again, the sound seemed to anger Seraphol as she pouted tenderly. Good Seraphol said and then walked away leaving Ravel and Issei confused and Ross was still in slight shock. What has happened? The brunette asked to no one in particular, while still looking down the hallway where Seraphol went. No idea. Dryag answered, also confused by the demon queen's actions. Well. It's not late Ravel said after ignoring Queen Leviathan's actions. The legendary Skidbladner Roswis exclaimed pointing at the sphere that was now floating next to Issei. The ski what? Issei asked, unable to pronounce the word the Valkyrie said. I heard and studied about them, but I had never seen one in person, Roswis ignored the brunette to approach the sphere and see it better. He ignored me. He muttered, watching how Roswis looked closely at the sphere. And you deserve it, Ravel said as he crossed his arms and looked away. And now what's wrong? The brunette asked himself after seeing the blonde's actions. It's very incredible. It still has no shape, but its intelligence is very developed to communicate. 
Roswis continued looking at the sphere with great interest. The sphere let out those sounds as it floated until it was in front of Issa. Roswis was surprised again, apparently he could understand the sphere. He wants to be your familiar. Roswis murmured making Issa look curiously at the sphere as did Ravel. Do you want me to be your familiar? The brunette asked the sphere that floated around him and then stopped in front of him again. It seems like it's a yes. Ravel said, looking interested at the interaction between the chestnut and the sphere. Well. I never made a familiar contract and I'm not very good with magic said the brunette, not quite sure how to proceed. It didn't take him much to accept since he was really interested in the sphere and curious why it chose him. I will help you Ravel said excitedly, but quickly turned red upon receiving the brunette's gaze. I have no choice but to help you. It is my duty as your assistant. Yes, that said that Sunday are looking away. Issei laughed lightly as did Roswis. I'm counting on your help, Issei said as he returned his gaze to the sphere. But Ravel put the notebook away from him and approached the chestnut tree and the sphere. It will be simple. You only have to distance yourself one meter each, then Issei Sama must release his aura, only his own, and not that of the sacred gear, said the blonde as she turned on her magic, and two magic circles appeared on the ground with two circles free inside them, so they can stand and or float. Issei and the sphere did as the blonde requested. The magic circles shined after both of them were in position. The brunette released his aura just as the blonde said, although that was a little dangerous, since the demonic side of him could be quickly identified, but he didn't care anymore. Ravel and Roswis looked at him curiously as they sensed and identified the demonic aura. Issei just shrugged, brushing it off, and that seemed to calm them both down, because they shrugged and ignored him anyway. What a lack of reaction. Bryag commented, slightly incredulous at the lack of surprise on the part of both women, at the exposure of his partner's demonic power. Issei didn't comment anything, it was better that way, and he would save himself the annoying explanation. Although, internally, it seemed curious to her how they both ignored something so important on a global level, but it must be that they are already used to strange things happening around them. The magic circles shone brightly and then slowly faded away. Ready, the blonde phoenix said without further ado, confusing the brunette. Already? Just like that. The hybrid questioned. Something more like a crazy oath or something similar was expected. Yep was the blonde's simple response, leaving Issei with a poker face. You can feel a connection if you concentrate. Bryag said calmly. He was also a little disappointed, he expected something more striking but nothing. A flash and that's it. Issei concentrated for a few moments, it was difficult for him because he almost automatically entered his mental space out of habit, but, concentrating on some connection, he was able to find a slight aura connected to his own aura. Ah. There it is the brown man murmured, already fully feeling the connection. The sphere was slightly taking away his power, it was nothing worrying, but since it was just taking something away from him and it wouldn't stop him from fighting. It's strange that it's still in that form. Ross was commented, examining the sphere. You still haven't explained to me what it is, Issei said, still interested in what his new familiar was. Both women looked at him with a serious face and then denied and sighed. How synchronized. Issei couldn't help but see that detail of both of them. You just form a familiar contract without even knowing what said familiar is. Ravel crossed her arms and shook her head in disappointment. Although she didn't even know what the sphere was, but no one knew that. And what is? The brunette with a poker face asked her assistant that she couldn't help but get nervous. Be well. Roswis is the best person to explain the origin of her new relative, since she seems very excited about him. The blonde turned her gaze so that the brunette wouldn't see her blushing with embarrassment. Dot. She is just as lost as me. The brunette's poker face still remained, but indignation predominated inside it. Roswis denied with a slight smile as she looked at both teenagers, she saw it coming from the brunette, but not from the blonde. The Skidbladner is one of the legendary ships that were made by the tribe called Ivaldi, who also created Thor's hammer, Jolner. Very few of them were created. I have never been able to see one in my life, and I saw a lot when I was Odin's escort, the Valkyrie explained, looking at the sphere. Issei became more interested in the now legendary sphere. Apparently her attraction effect attracted another legendary being. But this time it wasn't something or someone that wanted to kill him or have him on her side, a breakthrough. Do you keep that form until Issei Sama asks you to change into her ship form? Ravel asked, also interested in the familiar. From the information I have, Issei's familiar must have the shape of a small ship as an initial shape after the contract, since it evolves and adapts according to the imagination, power and need of the contractor. But I don't know why it hasn't taken yet. Its initial form explained the Valkyrie still looking at the sphere trying to decipher why it has not changed shape. Is she powered by magic? Issei asked looking at the sphere. Generally, answered the Valkyrie. Information was very scarce about the Skidbladner as they were so few, she knows that some were used with magical runes or pure magical power, but she does not know if they work with another source of power. Issei sighed. 
her magical power was almost zero, not only because of her lack of talent with him, but she never paid attention to it, since she had concentrated on dragonic power, or a distribution and conditioning his body. She had recently begun experimenting with his demonic and slightly sacred power, she had not made much progress, but she had learned something. Although she didn't know if that would help her now familiar. It may be that she is still adjusting. Dryag commented. He didn't know anything about those beings and he couldn't contribute much. I'm going to ask my grandmother about this, she may know something since she interacted with Askadbladner in the past Ross was said, remembering that her grandmother knew a little more about the legendary ships. I was going to ask Dahlia, but that may work better, Issei agreed with Roswis. She trusted Dahlia's knowledge but, from what she heard, his friend's mother was very knowledgeable. My mother might also know, but I know she focused more on the runes than other things. Roswis said thinking about the knowledge he knew from her mother. Well. What if you give him a name for now? Ravel caught their attention as he turned his attention back to the sphere. Issei stared at the sphere. A name for a legendary ship that was unlucky enough to encounter it. The wandering whales, an excited Dryag exclaimed. No way. Issei denied instantly much to Dryag's disappointment. A name? Let's see Issei began to think of an appropriate name for a legendary ship. If it ends up being a ship. The event Ravel exclaimed after seeing the time. The raiding game must have already started. I can wait. He muttered brown. He was thinking of a name and that was more important. No talking we have to go, the VIPs must already be gathered, and you are a guest of the higher ups the blonde exclaimed as she approached the brunette. You're right, Ross was said, preparing to leave quickly. How annoying. I'll think while we go to Haya said the brunette, annoyed because they didn't let him think calmly. It's been half an hour. Irina Shidu muttered. The raiding game had just started and the brunette had not yet made his presence known. I hope no one gets hurt. Mickey Hayadu was nervous in her seat as she watched the screen showing the participants. Next to the Hayadu matriarch was her husband, Goru. The adult brunette looked at the screens carefully, this would be the first time he would see a supernatural fight. Hugh at the snack table was a happy and carefree Tichmaru eating distant varieties of cheeses. Ten minutes until planning time ends, the commentators gave the warning, making the stands go crazy with excitement. Finally I find them the door to the room was opened, drawing the attention of those who occupied it. Dalia Mickey exclaimed, happy to see the Valkyrie who was her son's friend. The Valkyrie was dressed in a white dress that hugged her thighs and hung a black leather jacket on her arm. It's been a while, Mickey Dahlia approached the Haidu matriarch to greet her. Lately she hasn't had much time for her typical calls, her work consumes a lot of her time. Irina pouted as she saw how well the Valkyrie got along with her love interest friend's mother. She also couldn't help but admit how good that outfit looked on her. She had come casually, blue jean pants, a white blouse and a coat. That outfit looks great on you I admire Dahlia seeing the set in Mickey. It was a recommendation from Ravel Chan Mickey said as she adjusted a red dress with gold accents that reached below her knees. Ravel had prepared her for that event. The little demon gave her that beautiful dress because she knew that people would see them at some point along with Issei, who was currently one of the most famous young people in the underworld and the alliance for the program in which she stars. Dot. Boru himself was also dressed for the occasion, he had even done his hair to be more elegant like his wife. Issei's assistant. I see. Well, she has done a great job Dahlia said, nodding satisfied with the blonde phoenix's actions. Do the Valkyrie saw the small rodent on the table, it was greeting her while he continued eating to her amusement. Hello. Irina greeted the Valkyrie politely. They hadn't interacted much to be called friends, but it had to be polite. Childhood friend. Irina, right. Dolly greeted the angel who nodded upon being recognized. She couldn't help but feel small before the Valkyrie, not only because of her beauty, but also with the power that she radiated and the memory that she is someone very close to Issei. The Valkyrie could clearly sense the angel's mood. She found the behavior she showed funny just for being someone close to Issei. Inexperienced and young. Dahlia's smile widened and she took a seat near the Haidu adults so she could comment on some things during the match. The time is up the Bale vs. Gremory office match begins. It was heard in the room, making everyone present pay attention to the screens. She let out a long sigh upon hearing the commentator's warning. That half hour of preparation was good for calming his cravings. It's time. Let's show how much we've grown Ria's Gremory exclaimed with confidence in his voice. The Gremory nobility responded to the king's trust in him with enthusiasm. The match was advantageous for both families or, as Akeno said, for the two kings who hit before they ask. It was a match match with two objectives that gave you victory. The first and easiest objective was to eliminate the king and that automatically gave victory to the team that eliminated said king. The second objective was more complicated to achieve. In the center of the playing area there was a small castle, this castle had to be captured and secured by one of the two teams. 
until then it was easy, the difficult thing was that to capture the castle the entire team, or the pieces that are still in play, had to be inside for one minute, without any member of the enemy team entering, and if the enemy enters, the minute count would be cancelled, until the infiltrator is kicked out and restarted. The playing area was an extensive forest with some medium-sized mountains. There were no bases for both teams, if a pawn wants to promote he must go to the castle in the center, this promotion only has effect while he is inside the castle or in the area close to it. The Grimmery team had appeared in a small clearing surrounded by trees, near them there was a mountain and a small lake. The match lasts one hour, the match ends in a draw if none of the objectives are met. Let's proceed with the plan Ria's ordered looking at Zenobia and Yudo. Both knights nodded and used their speed to quickly climb the mountain, they could use their wings, but they must not reveal their position to the enemy. Asper the aforementioned nodded at his role. He quickly transformed into several bats and began to fly between the trees to keep an eye on the surroundings until the knights return. Kaneko extended his senses to provide further support for surveillance. Rhea sent a look at his queen, he understood immediately and began to create several barriers around the area. These would create some defense and distraction in case the enemy happened to pass by. Ultron was on high alert as he scanned the surroundings, ready to act to protect the king from him. This is the beginning. Rhea saw the artificial sky of the dimension, there the game time was displayed. I don't understand why so much control with magic circles if people use them anyway. Issei commented while they were waiting for the cable car to go up to the floating city, agrees. It took them about 20 minutes to get to the station in the limousine that Ravel requested. People who follow the rules don't use them without permission. Ravel said sitting next to the chestnut tree. She was nervous because they hadn't arrived on time. Issei just sighed and settled further into her seat. In the left seat of the brunette was Roswiss who looked at the place with curiosity. How will Grimmery fare? Issei looked at the purple sky of the underworld, thinking about her partner's question. I don't know this Bale, I don't know his abilities, and I don't know the game mode either. It's hard to know how she will do. He hadn't found out about Rhea's opponent, and he wasn't really interested in him, he already has a lot with the demons I met. Do you think they will let you participate in one of those games in the future? They might give you your pieces for having a king's piece, right? She unconsciously touched her chest upon hearing the question. She wouldn't deny that the demonic games didn't catch her attention, they seemed interesting, and from what I hear, those who participate are really good at what they do. But he was not a very strategic person. He was happy fighting like a madman, he does not deny that using his head is important, but he only likes to fight and feel the adrenaline. Who knows? I don't even know what awaits me in the future. He had just begun his celebrity duties and didn't know where he was going to be tomorrow. Issei Sama the aforementioned came out of his thoughts when he was called. Um? What's wrong? Issei looked at Ravel who left her nervousness about the event for a moment and now she seemed a little shy. Then my parents offered to host you and your parents in the Phoenix Territory. Since we will have to stay here for a few days to do your events. I am not inviting you. It was my parents at the Phoenix shy and Sundier. Issei stared at her assistant, Roswiss looked at the two of them expectantly and Ravel was dying of grief. It's okay, the brunette said simply. Eh hey, what? Both women looked at the calm brunette in disbelief. That's fine, the brunette said again, looking at how the cable car was already arriving. But. Just like that. Ravel asked, still surprised by the quick acceptance. Yep. You told me that you wanted me to see your house when I can and I'm going to comply, said the brunette getting up from his seat. Ravel remembered that today on the plane he had asked the brunette and he had accepted. He gave himself a mental blow for forgetting that. Come on, we have to see how the tomato comes out of this, both women hurried to get up to get on the cable car. Are you sure to go? Adult demons are not like that Sundier, the tomato or the four-eyed citri. Apart from the fact that your parents will go too. Dryag asked as Issei took a seat on the cable car. I know. But I'd rather go there than go back to Kuo and go to school. Dryag sighed upon hearing her companion's response. Issei, Ravel and Roswiss were chatting on the cable car that was already halfway there. The chestnut looked out the window to see the landscape. It may be the underworld, but it is very different from what they say out there. They were quite high up, but it was not difficult for him to see because of his adjustable vision, advantages of being half-dragon. Hmm? Issei saw someone she hadn't thought she would see in a long time. That someone was making signs to him that he understood perfectly. What does he want from me? The brunette wondered. He had no obligation to go, but curiosity was tempting him. He looked towards the floating city, they were about to arrive, he looked back to where she was inside. Curiosity killed the cat. Issei closed his eyes, thinking about the possibilities. Girls, Issei called to both females who looked at him. Go with my parents, I'll catch up, said the brunette walking to the door of the cable car. But where are you going? The blonde asked, surprised by the brunette's actions. The deal with something, go and stay with my parents, the brunette said as he jumped off the cable car to the surprise of both women. 
Isayasay Sama was the last thing the chestnut heard as Dryag spread his wings to propel him towards his goal. Are you sure about this? Dryag asked as the brunette approached the place. It's very strange that he is here. And even stranger that he wants to talk to me after that day. The brunette was serious about the situation. He flew for a few more minutes until he reached a small forest away from a small town, Dryag guarded his wings as he began to enter the forest. It didn't take him long to find his target. This one was a few meters away from him and had his back turned to him. You have a lot of courage to come to this place where the leaders and many important people are a few kilometers away, said the brunette, stopping two meters from his target. It's worth the risk. He said as he turned to make eye contact with the brunette. What are you doing here? Jean. The brunette said, seeing the young blonde with blue eyes, a member of the hero brigade. I have something important to tell you. The brunette narrowed his eyes at the girl. The game had already advanced a lot and intensely. True to the game's title, the battle began with an intense encounter when Zenovia and Yudo met the Rook and Knight Bale, Lidora Bune and Baruka Furkas. Both Grimory Knights had fought with their all against Sarayrg's pieces. Zenovia had faced the Bale Tower using Durandal's aura to the fullest, she was able to win, but at the cost of his left arm breaking. Udo had shown off his new abilities against the Bale Knight, his balance breaker subspecies had made the difference against his opponent, giving him the victory. Both knights were going to regroup with their king, but neither of them waited for a second attack from Bishop Bale, along with the other rook, Coriana Andrilfus and Gandoma Balam. Zenovia suffered the most as she was not at full power due to her broken arm, and that led to her removal from the game after a devastating blow from Gandoma. Udo was barely able to retreat from the bishop's magic bombers and the rook's attacks. In the end he was able to use his speed to his advantage and move away from the place to join the others. That happened the first 10 minutes of the game. Riaz had lost a knight, but his pieces had taken out two of the opponents. At minute 15, Riaz was alarmed when she heard the bell start to count down the minute of capture of the castle. He ordered a slightly recovered Yudo and Akeno to advance towards the center of the map to stop the capture count. Queen and knight used the speed of their pieces to reach the objective quickly. Upon arriving they found the pieces that ambushed Yudo and Zenovia, along with the other knight and Bishop Bale, Liban Cressel and Miss Tita Savnok. The Gremory Queen had begun the magic bombardment towards the castle, the Bale bishops had already put up defensive barriers to protect themselves from it, although the raw power of the sadistic Gremory gave them difficulties. While the bishops defended themselves, the Rook and Knight Bale focused on Yudo who quickly reactivated his subspecies balance breaker to entertain the Rook and himself fight the knight. The capture count was already at 20, that alarmed the two Grimory pieces who still couldn't stop the count. The Keno had already begun to use her fallen power to push back the Bale bishops, who were creating a barrier behind another to prevent her from entering the castle herself. The Udo had it difficult because she had to dodge the tower's attacks and the knight's gravity techniques. The countdown was about to reach 50, but it was quickly cancelled, surprising the Bale pieces. The Gremory bishop, Gaspar Vladi, had made his presence known using the distraction of the battles and her transformation abilities to infiltrate the castle and thus stop the countdown. The timid Gremory quickly began to dodge the bombers of the Bale bishops, this action was taken advantage of by Akeno, who quickly charged her holy lightning and attacked at point-blank range the distracted bishops who, according to Akeno, could do nothing against their devastating attack. The Holy Ray was about to hit the careless bishops, but something happened, a black hole had appeared just above the Bale bishops, with surprise, Akeno saw how his ray was swallowed by the black hole, thus saving the Bale bishops. The Gremory Queen, stunned from seeing her attack disappear, could not feel the attack forming on her back. The Udo had warned the Queen about him, but it was too late, the attack formed on the Himijima's back was lightning, and not just any lightning, it was the Holy Lightning of the Gremory Queen. The Keno could do nothing and received his own attack, causing her to automatically exit the game. Udo gritted his teeth in frustration, looked up from him, and there he saw the reason for the queen's sudden retreat from him. Floating above the castle was a young woman, it was Queen Bale, Kusha Abaddon. Issei sighed for the third time as he walked through the halls of the state located in the floating city. His day had been ruined a lot. It already seemed strange to me that nothing happened. The brunette couldn't help but think about what Jean told him. It was absurd and almost impossible for that to happen, but it is happening. She wouldn't lie to him in that situation. And what will you do? Bryag asked just as thoughtfully as the brunette. Take precautions and wait. He couldn't do anything else. Sooner or later the problem would come to him, he just had to get stronger to end everything once and for all. In those days everything would be fairly safe with his parents in the Phoenix Territory, it was a safe place from what he knew, it was the third most important family in the underworld, because of the Phoenix Tears, the security would be very high in that place. Wow. The Red Dragon and its forbidden existence user the brunette snapped out of his thoughts. He looked up and saw a bald man dressed in a Hawaiian shirt, shorts, and some flip-flops. Indra. Issei narrowed his eyes at the man after hearing Dryag. His luck runs out again. Your pawn is interesting. 
Sarah Erd Bale commented slightly looking at Ultron who was fighting his queen. Bria's Gremory was breathing heavily, his arms and legs trembling with pain from having blocked his cousin's blows. Only her, Ultron and Asia remained. She had lost to Udo and Gaspar when they both fought against the knight, Rook, Bishops and Queen Bale, the duo of Grimory men had taken the Bishops and Rook until they couldn't take it anymore and were taken out by the Queen and the knight Bale. After that he was to reward Gaspar for having shown bravery and skill. Hineko had excelled against the remaining Bale knight. He managed to take the horse and damage the Queen with her Senjutsu, but in the end she was removed by Sereard's intervention. Both teams had forgotten to capture the castle. Both kings had the same number of pieces in play, Rias with his last bishop and his only pawn, Sererg with his queen and his only pawn. Rias, in her bravery, had gone hand to hand against her cousin. Fatal mistake on her part because she couldn't keep up with the speed and strength of her cousin. Not even by increasing his abilities with demonic and magical power did he reach the strength of his cousin. Looks like we'll have to try harder. The redeed murmured as he felt a warm aura around her, the pain and tingling sensation disappearing from her arms and legs. He didn't have to turn around to know that Asia was the one who sent her healing aura towards her. I recommend starting the plan if we want to focus on Sereard Bale. Ultron's robotic voice was heard over the Grimmery's communicator. Rhea's sighed in resignation, she wanted to wait a little longer to start her plan, she wanted her cousin's pawn to show her capabilities, but he had not moved at any time. She turned her gaze to Asia who quickly understood what she had to do. Okay. Let's get started the power of destruction exploded around the redeed and then concentrated on her arms and legs. Sererg smiled excitedly. His cousin would finally use the power of destruction. At ready cousin. Now we will go with everything worn the redeed, while long black gloves with purple lines that reached her elbows formed on her arms, long boots that reached to her knees of the same design as those formed on her legs. Gloves. I expect nothing less Sererg exclaimed, surrounding himself with Taki. I don't want to deal with a renegade who possesses a mysterious power, the god Indra said nonchalantly as he walked away from the chestnut tree. As Say clenched his fists and teeth, he was shaking and he hated when she did it. Ambastard roared the brunette as he slammed the wall, cracking it. We already know who the culprit is but nothing can be done. Dryag said, annoyed by the god. I see you ran into him too. As Say looked up to meet Azazel. He's a damn bastard, the brunette said as he sighed. It is. But it is like that because he knows that you are no match for him, said the fallen one as he used his magic to repair the wall that the brunette hit. For now. The brown man murmured, thinking about the aura that the god released. Azazel smiled slightly upon hearing that. He did not doubt that with enough time the chestnut could match the power of the gods. You better hurry up, that Sundear Brad is throwing a tantrum, said the fallen one as he walked away from the brunette. Asay saw the fallen man for the last time and then went towards his destination. Sarah Erdbale's queen is removed, he could be hurt on the playing field. Asia was breathing heavily as light tears fell from her eyes. She didn't like to hurt people, but her duty asked her to do so. What the hell was that? Sarah Erdbale wondered as he looked at the place where his queen was. She had concentrated on dodging his cousin's destructive attacks, but she failed to see what the Gremory Bishop did for her queen to be instantly removed. The only thing she noticed was a red aura and a heart-rending scream from his queen. Don't look away Bale had to get out of his thoughts to avoid a kick from his cousin. I'll just say it. Your nobility never ceases to surprise me, said the Bale while reaffirming his guard. You see. They are all unique, the Gremory murmured as she floated thanks to her wings. It was annoying to walk around with her destruction boots on as she destroyed everything she touched. Lord Sereard the aforementioned slightly saw his last piece in play approaching him quickly. You're at a disadvantage cousin Rias commented as she floated towards Asia and Ultron. I'm still standing, the Bale said with mild amusement. Not by much Rias increasing his aura. Asia Argento's aura is only enough for one more shot. Ultron spoke through the communicator so as not to reveal information to the opponents. Rias looked at Asia, she was breathing heavily as she wiped away her tears. Just one more time Asia and I won't ask you to do it again for a while, Rias said slowly. He was aware that he was forcing her to do something she didn't want, but she needed him to do it to win. I have to get stronger. He said to the redeed as he looked intensely at his opponents. Where were you Ravel exclaimed to a newly arrived Desai. Desai ignored his assistant's request to see the room, his parents were there watching the screens attentively, both dressed elegantly. They looked very good. It must have been Ravel's plan. The brunette said to himself while he continued looking at those present. Roswis was also there looking at the screens, next to her was Irina, and, something that surprised him a lot, on the other side of Roswis was Dahlia. The brunette narrowed his eyes at the older Valkyrie, there was something different about her, it wasn't the dress that clung to her body, it wasn't her ponytail hairstyle, much less her long and exposed legs. There was something about her that made him not I can take my eyes off her. Interesting. Dryag had caught something the first moment his partner entered the room, but for now he would remain silent. Issei-sama. 
Ravel called to the brunette who had been staring at Dahlia. The blonde phoenix pouted at being completely ignored. They say. The other occupants of the room had finally noticed the brunette's presence. Everyone had turned to look at the brunette who quickly fled the room after looking Dahlia in the eyes. The room fell silent after the brunette left. Everyone was surprised by the sudden action, except one who smiled amusingly. Chapter 41 Special Medium The Give It Time is up The rating game has ended with the victory of Sir Aird Bale. Issei heard the announcement, but quickly ignored it due to his current situation. The brunette's heart continued beating rapidly after running out of the room where his parents and friends were. You missed the entire holy match. Dryag said, slightly disappointed at not seeing a fight, but what the brunette was currently going through made up for it slightly. Issei ignored the dragon, he was more focused on what he felt when he saw Dahlia. When he saw her it was. As if his entire world was focused only on her, his anger at the news that Jean gave him and the subsequent confrontation with Indra had gone away just by seeing the older Valkyrie, his heart had accelerated just as much. Like when he saw Eve and, like his late girlfriend, something in his mind told him to go hug her with all his strength and not let her go. What the hell was that? The brunette asked himself as he felt his heart slowly calm down. Who knows? He commented the dragon, but Issei could detect the amusement in the dragon's voice. You know what happened to me, the brunette exclaimed mentally. It wasn't a question, it was a statement. Maybe. But find out yourself, he said the dragon and then cut the link. Son of your lizard mother, the brunette exclaimed, angry with his dragonic companion for leaving him like that. It's been a while, brat, the brunette looked to the other side of the hallway, there he saw the god Odin, and next to him came a big man, about two meters tall, with long red hair, blue eyes and a beard that matched his hair. He was dressed in typical Asgardian skins mixed with armor. Old man. You were also invited, said the brunette approaching both men, while he filed away his reaction to think about later. I couldn't miss this game after the fiasco that the previous one suffered, said the god of Asgard while stroking his beard. Issei nodded to the god's words, he would have liked to watch the match, but the typical things happened where he is always involved. Both teams showed great talents and unique abilities, plus that combination between the Gremory pawn and bishop, commented the Reed thinking about the raiding game. Ho oh, oh, ho that young girl with a didn't kill a fly look can do so much damage next to that robot, said Odin as he stroked his long beard. Are they talking about Asia? The really curious brunette asked himself. He knew from the days in Kyoto that Asia has been training her physique and her magical aura is considerable, but the blonde showed no signs of fighting hunger or killer instinct. By the way. The brunette was brought out of his thoughts when he saw how the red-haired giant extended his hand to him. I am Thor, god of thunder and strength, it is a pleasure to meet the bearer of the Welsh dragon, the Retid, now the god of thunder, Thor, introduced himself. Ah. I'm Haidu Issei the brunette automatically responded to the god by shaking his hand that was twice as big as his. He was slightly stunned by how polite the god was. My son is really interested in both bearers of the celestial legendaries, after all, they are both going through abnormal growth, Odin commented still stroking his beard. I have met some carriers of both Celestials, and they were always overwhelmed with their power, seeing the current ones act so calm and with an abnormal growth of power is really interesting and intriguing, Thor said, standing again next to his father. On the one hand we have a descendant of the demon Lucifer with human blood and carrier of a Longinus, on the other we have a human carrier of Longinus who was reincarnated into a hybrid with a human soul. Both different but equally similar. Yes, very interesting the God of Thunder said again. Issei really didn't know how to feel about the God's words. Except for Odin and Izanami, the gods who spoke or interacted with him were not very calm or polite like Thor. Until now they tried to kill, kidnap and grape him, some of the Greek pantheon looked at him with indifference or simply ignored him, but none of them were very respectful or calm when talking to him. Their reputation in Asgard is growing after your battle with Loki. Some are not happy for killing one of our gods, but most respect you for your power, said Odin with a slight pause when mentioning Loki. Through one of my sons owes you an apology, Thor said, making Issei look at him curiously. Magni is the one who trained Einar Issei narrowed his eyes at the last name. Memories of last year with Dahlia came to mind. We found out recently. It was very strange that I didn't find out about that. It must have been when we had those meetings that we had to close the doors, said Odin with a distant look trying to remember that day. That man harassed someone very important to me, and I still owe him several blows. Issei murmured remembering his battle with Dahlia's ex-husband. He had fought with all his strength, but he could only make the Asgardian flee, obviously he hit him a lot, and he himself was hit, but he was able to make him flee. Ahaha, you were right, father the fire in his eyes is intense. Thor laughed with his powerful voice after seeing the brunette's gaze. That's right. I see that you grew up quite a bit in the time we didn't see each other, and that's good, young people should live life without worries, Odin spoke with a distant voice, surely remembering old times. I hope to see you later, Haidu Issei was the last thing Thor said, and then began to walk away with Odin. 
The brunette remained silent as he watched a hallway where both gods went. His thoughts again directed to a certain Valkyrie. They gave us a good. Rhea's grimery sighed as he stared at the grey ceiling of the medical room he was sent to after the raiding game ended in his defeat. Once again we witnessed the will of the lion Rhea's remained silent as he listened to his friend and queen. Both were frustrated, one for losing foolishly and the other for not being able to meet a goal. I wondered if Gasper has woken up yet. Akeno continued talking even though Rhea's remained silent. They had lost. Not because they were weak and not because they made a bad move. Their defeat was imminent after seeing the will to win that Sereard possessed even on the verge of unconsciousness, after receiving the combined shot of Asia, Ultron and Rhea's. Rhea's had never felt like this. He had experienced defeat several times but never like this. A defeat of sheer will. Aridid moved his hand to his chest, he could still feel the blow that his cousin gave him, the same blow that took her out instantly. It was a blow that reached his soul. Her cousin's desire, will, and thirst for victory had overcome her. She squeezed her hands tightly, she wanted to be angry, she really wanted to, but she couldn't. There was no anger in her for losing. It was as if a great invisible weight was lifted from her shoulders after her defeat against her cousin. The only thing she felt right now was the desire to get stronger, to improve more so that next time she can win. He had to do it. For her nobility, her friends, her family and for herself. Next. Akeno looked at her friend who was still staring at the ceiling with a look of determination. Next will be our victory Queen Gremory smiled slightly when she saw the confident smile that the Redeed showed. Ugh. I'm hungry Rhea stopped looking at the ceiling and was now giving the black-haired girl a puppy dog look which she sighed as she denied. Dryag was having a great time seeing his companion. He couldn't see how the power of the Redeed who harassed her companion grew, but now I could see how its bearer is breaking his head, trying to make sense of his reaction to the older Valkyrie. He knew why the brunette's reaction was. At first he was surprised, but then he was caught up in the fun of the new event that had presented itself. Better that you think about that than think about what can happen. Dryag narrowed his eyes as he watched how his bearer continued to break his head locked in one of the many bathrooms in the place, fun replaced by seriousness. The revelation given by that young woman named Jean had almost ruined the advance that her companion had given. For a few moments he could feel how those old thoughts of pure hatred returned to his companion. Luckily the encounter with the Valkyrie had paused everything. Am Indra. The Welsh dragon could not help but curse the Hindu god. He was completely sure, as was his companion, that the blessed god was responsible for the news that Jean gave to his companion. Although neither he nor he can do something like that. He must have received support from another god. Multiple theories ran through Dryag's mind. He wasn't much for doing these things, he blamed his partner for that, but he learned that it is necessary to think more, instead of solving everything by force. For him it was contradictory but, after spending a long time locked up, he learned to do things differently. It didn't help that the only thing he could do was see how his previous carriers lived, it was normal for the human way of thinking to rub off on him a little. My old self I know would make me laugh. The dragon couldn't help but think about it as he shook his head. It's amazing how quickly a day can change. The red celestial dragon focused his attention on the voice, still staring at Issei's image. The normal thing in my partner's life. He released the dragon. He was curious why that moderator decided to speak, but he preferred not to ask so that it wouldn't be obvious that he was very curious. For a moment I detected old dark feelings. It was quick but just as intense as to make me leave my core. The dragon listened attentively to the moderator. We learned of a very annoying problem. Bryag commented. He did not know if this being was always attentive to the life of his companion, but he did not lose anything in releasing a little information. See as the one who is always attentive, while well, I am only connected to the negative feelings of the wearer. He released the moderator in a calm tone. Dryag didn't know if this entity could hear his thoughts or could read him easily enough to know what he thought. Either of the two bothered him a lot. Just assumption. Dryag denied hearing the moderator's amused comment. He preferred to ignore it and pay attention to his partner. He took a long breath as he looked at his reflection. How long had he been standing there thinking about his meeting with his friend? TCH. My head doesn't have enough for these things he muttered as he poured water on himself again. The curiosity of how the hell there was running water in a floating city crossed his mind, but he quickly ignored it when remembering that he lived in a world where there was magic. What the buck am I doing? He questioned himself again looking at his reflection. He was in one of the many luxurious bathrooms that the Colosseum of the Floating City of Agrees offered, trying to make sense of his earlier reaction when he should be taking preventive measures so as not to lose something important to him. He closed his eyes, recapping his talk with Jean and the news he gave her. The news that ruined his day. Until I met her. He opened his eyes again, he forgot about his talk with Jean and his subsequent meeting with Indra to think about Dahlia. The reaction he had was not something new for him, he had felt it before with his late girlfriend Eve. But the intensity he felt when he saw his friend Valkyrie far surpassed what he felt a couple of years ago. But why now? 
He asked himself focusing on the memory and the sensations. The face of his friend appeared in his mind causing heat to attack his face. Ah damn he exclaimed, ruffling her hair in frustration and embarrassment. He was acting like a silly child at his first crush on her, it was inconceivable for him to react like that to a simple memory. For the third time, in less than an hour, he threw water on his face, trying to reduce the heat caused by just thinking about his friend. One moment he froze as he realized his previous thought. Falling in love. I fell in love with my friend. The self-revelation of his newfound feeling for his friend came as a shock. I feel like I'm watching the typical novel of inexperienced teenagers in his love life. As Say ignored the dragon, his attention was only on his new feeling for his friend. But. Why now he was panicking, he knew it, and he also knew that he couldn't stop it. You're overreacting. Dryag snorted at how dramatic his partner was acting. I'm not exaggerating he exclaimed as he sat down in that luxurious bathroom that was bigger than his room. Nonsense. Why oh you look like a 14 year old brat at first crush on him, he said the dragon calmly. He had said it on purpose because, literally, that was his reaction when he found out that he was in love with that foul-mouthed Russian. Elsha was the one who had intervened and advised a brunette since he and Belzard were disgusting on that subject, one for being a womanizer who never fell in love, and the other for being a maniac in combat. Stop acting like a brat who has no experience in these things, he exclaimed the dragon while he listened to the many questions that the brunette was asking. It wasn't like Elsha had done it that day, but he figured it would work. Assay stopped muttering when he heard his partner scream. He took a long breath to try to calm himself down and think clearly. Okay. I'd like to know why now. The brunette asked, already calm, looking at the bathroom ceiling. For now he decided to ignore her possible crush on him. There are several factors why. He commented on the dragon, trying to find the simplest words so that his companion would understand it. Assay remained silent, still with his gaze on the ceiling. The first factor, the most important, would be your meeting with her the day you kicked the almost demigods but a year ago. The brunette narrowed his eyes searching for the memory. It took him a few moments to have the memory of that day, it was difficult because he had fainted from the power he used and then the celebration that Dahlia had made. The bathroom. He murmured as he remembered that particular day. That's right, the bathroom, the dragon confirmed, letting the chestnut process slowly. Start memory, the newly recovered 16-year-old Issei was relaxing in the bathroom of the hotel where he and Dahlia were staying. Yesterday he had had his second conscious fight with a being of almost semi-divine category, he had managed to make him flee the place after hitting him with all his strength. It wasn't a complete victory, but he came out better than his friend's stupid ex-husband. Alia had healed him as best he could, while she continued to tell him how grateful she was for helping her. He had fallen asleep next to her after healing her wounds. She was just as tired as him, and neither of them wanted to move for the rest of the day. They had slept for almost 12 hours straight until hunger attacked them both. Dahlia had told him to take a bath, and then she would also take one, and then prepare a dinner in celebration of their battle yesterday. The brunette had quickly accepted since she wanted to relax her sore muscles. Ah. It's not like hot springs, but it's not bad at all, she murmured as she sank into the bathtub. You sound like an old man. Elsha commented with amusement. Issei would be embarrassed to know that Elsha was paying attention to what he was currently doing, but he won't say anything since he is too tired, and the bath was too good to ruin it because of his embarrassment. He already saw everything you have since you slept naked. Elzard said with grace and Dryag's laughter could be heard in the background. Issei sighed as he forgot that detail, but again he didn't say anything and continued to relax. Issei the bathroom door was kicked open. The brunette was startled, believing it was an attack, the movement made his muscles scream in pain, but he ignored it to look towards the door. Oh. The brunette's eyes almost popped out at the sight he had. There at the entrance to the bathroom was Dahlia in her birth dress. Ishay. Ehehe Dahlia staggered towards the frozen chestnut tree. Hey Dahlia. What are you doing and why are you naked? The brown man exclaimed, turning his gaze so as not to see his friend. Prince. Elzard muttered but earned his app from Elsha. Look what I brought a very happy Dahlia showed a bottle that Issei saw slightly. You were drunk. The brunette questioned, clearly seeing that it was a bottle of alcohol. MMMM, can sure. The Valkyrie said with amusement and then drank more from the bottle. The bottle only has a few sips. Dryag commented in a flat tone when he saw that the bottle was almost full. Someone doesn't know how to drink. Elsha commented between amused and interested in what would happen next. There I go Issei, who was still looking at the wall, heard the Valkyrie running. The brunette turned around, alarmed by the noise and the possible accident that could happen. Yahoo the Valkyrie exclaimed, jumping into the bathtub where the brunette was currently. Issei, by reflection, moved to catch her friend mid-flight, but she did not take into account her weakened state, and that caused them both to fall sitting in the bathtub, causing the water to jump everywhere. Luck, that's what the chestnut tree heard and then felt how the mental link was closing. She opened her eyes slowly only to close them again. The why. Well.her friend was sitting on her lap facing him. 
Haha. <laughs> Ishe. How cute. Dahlia caressed the brunette's cheek with her free hand. Dahlia. We better get out of this. Situation the brunette said with all the self-control he could muster. MMM. Nope. I'm comfortable here. The Valkyrie made a circular movement with her hips making the brunette tense. Alarmed by the movement and unconsciously, the brunette moved his hands to the Valkyrie's hips to stop her. An opening the brunette's eyes widened in shock when he felt the spout of the bottle in her mouth. Background the Valkyrie exclaimed as she continued holding the bottle. Issei could do nothing to stop the drunk Valkyrie, her weakened state, her problem with mini Issei, and the situation in general, prevented him from stopping what happened. Am.SHE drowned me, she closed her eyes tightly as she could no longer retain the liquid in her mouth, she had no choice but to swallow the alcohol that her dear friend was giving her in such a kind way. He was not a drinker, this would be his third time drinking alcohol. Dryag had told him that the small dragonic part of him protected him from normal alcohol, but in small quantities. Help. She asked the dragoner his sempace for the chestnut, but nothing, the link was closed. The fatigue and surprise that attacked the poor brunette were taking their toll on him, his eyes began to become glassy and unfocused, his head began to spin, and his body went limp. Hehehe <laughs> she eh? The brunette heard the distant laughter of his friend. Ugh. She slowly opened her eyes, but quickly closed them because of the bright light that hit her face. Mmm. Issei. He he. He forced himself to open his eyes upon hearing that murmur next to him. He ignored the headache and slight dizziness to turn around and see. No. Buck. He said in barely a whisper. There, lying next to him was Dahlia sleeping with a silly smile on her face, she was naked and only covered by a sheet. Sleeping Beauty has woken up. Elzard's familiar voice echoed through his mind causing his headache to increase. Tell me do you remember what happened? Elsha asked slowly so as not to cause more pain. They hadn't seen anything since they had closed the mental link. Issei didn't say anything. He was very focused on ignoring the pain, remembering and looking at his friend's body. This is going to take a while. An amused Dryag commented. He could quickly figure out what had happened the day before, but he would wait for his partner to remember, that was more fun. The brunette remained focused. His gaze passed his friend's beautiful body, trying to remember what happened yesterday after his friend forced him to drink alcohol. End of memory, neither of them remembered what happened that day. Dahlia, after controlling her headache, had told him that there was no hex, the brunette was somewhere between relieved and disappointed, but they both agreed to act as if nothing had happened. She was right when she said there was no hex, Dryag said after the long pause of memory. But. He muttered brown. He had believed his friend when she assured him that they didn't cross the line, but in the back of his mind, there was always the doubt that they did that much. Before going directly to the point at hand. Impatience attacked his say when the dragon said that, but he wisely let it speak. Do you remember that talk in Greece, the one we had before the mess with Helios? The dragon asked. Issei thought for a moment and then nodded. Yes. Something that would happen when I turned 18, he was still thinking about that talk, but he still had time to think about it in depth. Well. It seems that time has come forward. Issei went blank after hearing his classmates' words. The tiles were suddenly very interesting. He was ahead. I asked still without reacting. He is not acting at full power, but is showing signs of an early awakening, the dragon responded calmly. And? Why did he come forward? He asked again without looking away from the interesting tiles. It was advanced by different factors, but the most notable are your feelings, your death, resurrection, constant change of nature, and the mixture of auras that your body has, she said the dragon as if nothing had happened. Issei remained silent after her partner finished speaking. The logical part of Issei's brain understood the dragon's words, she had logic, but the part of his brain that she used the most was still in the process of assimilating. Let's say I've already assimilated this. I understand why I reacted to Dahlia, but why did I only react to her and why so intensely? Said the brunette, trying to remain as calm as possible. He more or less understood the words of his dragonic companion. It already seemed strange to him that his constant changes and life or death situations did not come with repercussions. Their reaction was amplified by a... No, by two important factors, he began to say Dryag slowly so that his companion could assimilate his words well. And those are. He had a vague idea of one of those reasons, but decided to wait instead. One would be your feelings for her. We both know that your feelings with her had taken a step further to being a simple friendship. He said the dragon so obviously that even the brunette had to admit that his feelings for Dahlia were always on the verge of being more than a simple friendship. The way he spoke to her was always simple and interesting, he felt very comfortable when she was around her, and he would not deny that more than once his gaze fell on the Valkyrie's beautiful body. Dot. I guess I'm kind of attracted to her. Was the brown Sundier's slight admission. Something attracted the Hexwell tension between the two is almost unbearable, the dragon exclaimed, surprised as his companion tried to hide his infatuation with the Valkyrie. Issei said nothing at the dragon's outburst. 
He was more focused on calming his cheeks than a little more, and you could already fry some eggs on them from how hot they were. Ignoring your tsundir moment. Dryag mocked in an intense way to return to the main topic. The second reason has a lot to do with what happened in the bathroom last year. This was the most interesting part for the dragon. Hey? The brunette blurted out confused. His shame forgotten by the dragon's last words. I have been keeping this memory since that day, and I couldn't wait any longer to make you remember it. There was something in the dragon's excited voice that scared the brunette. But you said nothing happened. The brunette muttered nervously at the prospect. You juju dot remember it. The dragon exclaimed, and soon the brunette felt as if something was unlocked in his mind. Start memory. You feel you took it all Dahlia exclaimed, throwing the now completely empty bottle of alcohol. The brunette's gaze was slightly lost. He had fainted for a few brief seconds due to lack of oxygen, but slowly regained consciousness. I thought. That he would die. He murmured Brown trying to focus his sight on him. Nope. I won't let my hero die. The Valkyrie hugged the brunette by the neck. The say was not well. The effect of the surprise, the lack of oxygen, the alcohol and the excitement he was feeling was clouding all of his judgment. Let me. Reward you. For. Your bravery. And. For. Protecting me. While he said that, the Valkyrie kissed the brunette. She had started with his shoulder, then moved to his neck and from there to his chest. Alia. The brunette murmured while he felt the Valkyrie continue kissing him dangerously down her chest. You were very brave. The Valkyrie stopped the kisses to begin caressing the brunette's chest and bringing her body closer to him. Alia. We. We have to stop. The brunette murmured as he tried to move. The Valkyrie's hand was getting dangerously close to the bottom of her. I don't want to. Let me do it. The Valkyrie didn't stop and, in a bold move, she kissed the stunned brunette's lips. Issei's mind was completely clouded when he felt the Valkyrie's lips. Something had happened at that moment, as if something inside him was suddenly unleashed. The brunette's eyes underwent a sudden change, they shone emerald, and his pupils sharpened. Alia was surprised by the change, she was going to end the kiss, but she was surprised again by the brunette's movement. Issei, without thinking, grabbed the Valkyrie's neck and pressed her towards him to deepen her kiss further. Alia, somewhere between surprised and excited, clung closer to the brunette to start a pleasant battle of kisses. The battle, by obvious experience, was won by the Valkyrie, but that does not mean that the brunette did not fight out of pure instinct. Wow. That was. Ah the Valkyrie could not finish because she was suddenly assaulted by the brunette who squeezed her butt tightly. The brunette's hands began to move again. He began to climb up the Valkyrie's smooth back, then moved them towards her shoulders, then stepped forward and slowly moved down towards her chest. Oh. Issei the Valkyrie exclaimed as she felt the sweet pressure on her breasts. The brunette and the Valkyrie had at some point moved into a room, and now they were both hugging and asleep. The room was suddenly illuminated by a strong red glow coming from the sleeping Valkyrie. The glow intensified for a few moments, and then disappeared as if nothing had happened. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.